Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Brawl Battle, and in this episode, we're going to be discussing about breaks. So in our last episode, we made loops uh, with for loops and while loops. And I tried to explain the practical uses of using a for loop and a while loop when you're uh, scripting inside of your game. Sometimes you want to be running the same tasks again and again. Uh, without having to just copy and paste the same lines of code every single time. But now we're going to be discussing about breaks, which will enhance our control with our loops. So let's just delete all of this really quick inside of our uh, loop script. Okay, so let's first start by creating a function. So we'll say local function, and then we'll call this function loop through. And then we'll add in parentheses here and then hit enter. So now we have a function that's called loop through. And what we're going to do with this function is that we're going to create a for loop. So we're going to write a for loop with a for, and then we're going to have a uh, counter variable, which usually for my counter variable, I just call it I uh, for no particular reason. This was just how I was taught when I named my counter variables for for loops and while loops and things like that. So we say for I equals, and then we have our starting value, which I'm going to say one. Uh, comma and then our end value. Let's say in this case we'll do ten thousand, and then our third number. Which, in all honesty, um, we don't have to have a third number. Uh, if you because if you remember, our third number is our incremental value. It's basically every time our for loop ends, how much is our uh, starting value going to increment? Uh, after each single iteration. In actuality, it's gonna be one by default. So if we know that it's gonna be one, then we don't need to add the third number if we don't want to, unless we're specifically incrementing it by a different number, like let's say two every single time or backwards by making a negative one every time. If if you know it's just gonna be one, then you don't need to have a third number. So we're just gonna say four I equals one, uh, which is the starting value and then 10,000, which is the end value. We're gonna say do. This is where we introduce breaks. So as you can see, uh, we have a starting value of 1 and an end value of 10,000, which is a huge number. That's a ridiculously big number. So there's no way we're going to actually go through 10,000 iterations inside of this for loop, right? Like, it's just not going to be possible. Like, let's say we had a print statement here that says this line has printed. Like... I don't think it's it's very practical to run 10,000 of these lines. So I figured that instead of having to run these 10,000 lines, what if we wanted to make it so that we would break this we would break the loop and just end it once a certain condition's met. Like let's say for example, this number has reached a, cer a specific number, uh then we should just end the function there. Here's what we would do. We would say, we would drop a few lines down here and then we would write a conditional with a with an if statement. We would say if, uh, and in this case, our counter variable is i. So we'll say if i equals, let's say 10. If, if i is equal to 10, then we will just simply type in the keyword break. Now, as you can see, what I did here is it's going to print this line has printed at the very beginning of our loop, and then it's gonna come down here with a conditional to check if i is equal to 10. If it's iterated through 10 times, then it's just going to break the, the loop, and then it's just going to end the function right here, uh, instead of having to go through this loop 10,000 times. So if we come down here and then uh, actually call our function loop through, and then we go back to the game and hit play through the test tab, then it should only print this the function 10 times yeah so this line has printed 10 times because we said that if i our counter variable is equal to 10 then we would just simply end the for loop there and just you know call it a night we're not gonna go all the way to 10,000. now you might be asking why this is useful Breaks would definitely be a useful thing to have inside of your loops, especially in a while loop when you don't know exactly how many times you want to run something. And you're uncertain of whether you need to actually run a loop for this specific number of times or if you want to indefinitely run a script, uh, indefinitely run a loop whenever a certain condition is met. Sometimes situations happen and you just want to end the loop right there without having to go through the entire loop. With that being said, let's delete our for loop here, and this time we'll use a while loop. So let's create our control variable. Uh, we'll just we'll just say local i equals one because that's going to be our starting value. And then what we're going to say down here is we're going to say while i uh, is less than or equal to one hundred thousand, some some ridiculous number like that. Uh, is that a hundred thousand? No, that's actually a million. All right, but we'll do a million then. 
So while i is less than or equal to 1 million, do this. We will print uh, this while statement has been printed. We'll say that, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to write an if statement here saying if i is equal to, let's say, 200, then break. And we'll also just write a print statement here to really confirm it being like, uh, I has reached 200. So now if we go back into the game, this is pretty similar to what we did with our for loop. It's just we're writing this inside of a while loop instead. So if we run the game, uh, it is lagging just a tiny bit. Ah, okay. I messed up here because uh, I, I made the mistake that I said not to make when we uh, when we talked about while loops is that I didn't update our counter variable. It stayed as one and that's why it never reached 200 and it also never reached 1 million. So take my fault as a lesson that you it is very important to update the counter variable with i plus equals one so that it doesn't just stay at one, it actually reaches 200. Because as you can see down here, it says script timeout, exhausted allowed execution time, because Roblox literally kept repeating the statement like 54,000 times until the script literally crashed because it kept indefinitely printing the statement. That's why you should be careful about that. So yeah, uh, it has reached 200 because I, uh, because I had my control statement here, uh, and it worked out perfectly. All right, well, this has been Break Statements. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.